I'm Nate Savage, and in this guitar lesson, I'm gonna teach you your first song in five simple, easy to follow steps. Now, if you've never played guitar before, that's totally fine. I'm gonna assume that you've never even picked up a guitar before as far as this lesson goes. And it doesn't matter if you have an acoustic or electric, everything's gonna apply the same to either one you have. So by the end of this lesson, you're gonna be able to play through this song on your guitar, it's gonna be awesome. The first step we're gonna go over is just some guitar fundamentals. I just wanna make sure that we're on the same page and that you have a good start to your journey on playing the guitar. So the first thing I wanna go over with, with you is just how to hold the guitar. Now, usually when somebody picks up the guitar in their right hand and they sit it on their right leg, and that's just known as the casual method of holding the guitar, right? The temptation that you're gonna have as a beginner when you're starting to play the guitar and you're holding it is to kind of let the guitar slide forward so you can kind of see what's going on with your hands. Resist the temptation to do that. Put the guitar straight up pull it into your body and sit up straight when you're holding the guitar. Now, the next thing we need to go over as far as some fundamentals is just the numbering systems that you're gonna encounter when you're playing the guitar. The numbering system for your fingers, numbering system for the frets on the guitar, and the numbering system for the open strings of the guitar. And this may seem really simple to you, and it is, but it's really important for you to have this down so when you start learning chords and things like that, it's real easy for you. So, the numbering system for your fingers is just this. Your index finger is your first finger. Your middle finger is your second finger. Your third finger, your ring finger is your third finger. And your pinky is your fourth finger. Now, if you don't know what the frets are of the guitar, the frets are just these little metal strips here in the wood, right? And those are attached to what we call the fretboard. When you count frets, you go to the first little metal strip and you place your finger right behind it. That's the first fret. And then next one up, Right behind it would be the second fret, third fret, fourth fret, and so on. And for this lesson, you're only gonna need to know really the third of the first three frets, right? Other than that, it's not a big deal. Just know that this is the first, second, third, fourth, all the way up the fretboard. The last numbering system that we need to go over is just the numbers of the open strings so you know where to put your fingers when I tell you how to make your first chords and stuff like that. So just remember that the thinnest string is gonna be your first string. And the thickest string is gonna be your sixth string. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six. Again, the thinnest is your first, and the thickest is your sixth string. That does it for the fundamentals. Next, I wanna get into some basic strumming technique with you. And the first thing I wanna talk about is just how to hold the pick. And everyone holds the pick differently. And it's really subjective, so you're gonna have to experiment with some things for yourself and find out what works for you. But first of all, let's just talk about the type of pick I'm using and the type of pick you should use. People always ask me, Nate, I don't know what kind of pick to use, I don't know what thickness to use, there's so many different kinds out there, what am I supposed to do? I would just start with a nice medium pick, maybe 0.73 millimeters or something like that. If you like a thicker pick, you can go with a thicker one. If you like a thinner one, you can go with a thinner one. But a medium pick, just a regular shaped guitar pick is a good place to start. Now, as far as strumming goes, strumming technique, there's been an analogy that I've used for a long time for teaching that just works better than just about anything else I've come up with or seen. And it's this right here. Just pretend like you have some honey on your finger and a feather is stuck to it, okay? And you're just trying to shake it off. That's a really good technique for learning how to strum. Number one, it keeps you relaxed. Number two, it gets your wrist involved with the motion, which kind of leads me to my next point. When you strum, you don't want all the motion coming from your elbow when you just lock your wrist like this for a couple of reasons. First of all, after a while, that can really start to hurt your elbow if you do just from the elbow. Second of all, if you're strumming it, you know, songs that are a higher tempo, you're gonna have a hard time keeping up if you just use your elbow. So think about that analogy, the honey stuck on your finger with a feather there and just try to flick it off. With that in mind, let's just do some regular downstroke strumming. Don't even worry about fretting any chords yet. Just think about that analogy, relax, and strum to the strings, right? Let's do that over and over again until you get it down. And one thing you might wanna consider is if you're having trouble holding onto the pick, if it's moving around a lot and kind of sliding around, you might wanna consider holding the pick with your first and second fingers instead of just your index finger and your thumb like this. As far as pick grip goes, you can try both. Stick the pick out like this, grab it with your index finger, come down with your thumb, and if it's sliding around, try your index finger and your second finger to hold onto that. And just try some more downstrokes. Mm -hmm. 
Now I wanna go over some basic upstroke strumming with you because I know that a lot of newer players really struggle with upstrokes for a couple of reasons. I have some tips for you that'll help you avoid the pitfalls that I see newer players struggle with. First of all, let me just show you some upstrokes, what they look like. You'll probably notice a couple of things. The first thing is when I play upstrokes, I don't hit all six strings usually, even if the chord I'm playing uses all six strings. Usually, I only hit the top three to five strings. So don't feel like you have to go through all six strings with your upstrokes. The second thing about your upstrokes is you don't have to dig a ton of the pick into the strings because you run the risk of kind of getting it caught in the strings. Just use enough of the tip of the pick to kind of graze over and get the appropriate volume for your upstroke. Let's talk about counting a little bit since we're talking about strumming. When you hear the beat of a song, most songs are in 4-4 time, right? That means when you hear a drummer count off 1, 2, 3, 4, that's the beat of the music or the main pulse of the music. So you need to get used to starting to count when you strum. If you count 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, that is the beat of the music. Now, each group of four notes is one measure or one bar of music. And that's important to know just so you can keep track of where you are in the song when it comes time for us to learn it. And so you can keep track of how long you should strum each chord for. Let's do that again. Let's practice just some downstroke strumming and count out loud. Use just whole notes or one strum per measure. And you're gonna do that on the one of each measure. measure. So you have one, two, three, four, one. Once you get that down and you're comfortable with that, we can throw some upstrokes in there and we can use quarter note strumming, which is strumming on every count that you do. So alternating down and upstrokes on every number. So one, two, And don't forget to stay relaxed. Remember the honey and feather analogy and also remember the tips about not digging too much of the pick into the strings for your upstroke and not having to hit all the strings on your upstrokes too. So those are the tips I have for you for strumming. If you need to pause the video and work on this, that's totally fine. Now it's time to learn the open chords that you're gonna be using for this. And the first one is an E minor chord. And to work on this chord and learn it, we're gonna learn some basic chording technique too. So the first thing I want you to do is stick your hand out, just like you're holding an apple or something in your hand. That's a really good basic posture to think about when learning chords, right? Take that posture, move it up to the guitar neck, stick your thumb on the back of the neck, and that's kind of the feel or the technique that you wanna think about when you're first starting to learn how to make chords. When you have your hand on the neck like this, you don't wanna kink it your wrist too far one way or too far the other way. If you kink it too far this way, it's gonna to start to hurt right here after a while. If you kink it too far this way, there's no way you're gonna ever make clean sounding chords and be able to reach the notes on the fretboard. Let's just get this chord on here to start with. Put your second finger on the second fret of the fifth string there, and your third finger on the second fret of the fourth string. That's the entire shape. You're only gonna use those two fingers, press them down, only press them down as hard as you need to to make a good sound, and slowly strum all six strings. Now, did your chord sound nice and clean or did it sound something like this? If it sounded like that, it's usually three reasons why you're gonna get a bad sound out of a chord. The first one is your fingers need to be right behind the frets. If your fingers are further back, towards the back end of the frets, it's gonna be really hard to get a really buzz-free sound there. So make sure your fingers are right behind the frets. Also, the second reason is your fingers might not, you might not be coming right down on the tips of your fingers right there. So make sure you're coming right down on the very tips of your fingers. Another reason you may be getting a bad sound out of your chords is your fingers may be brushing up against the neighboring strings and muting them. So on this chord, for example, your third finger may be brushing up against the G string or the third string there and muting it. So be careful about that, make sure the fingers you're fretting with are only touching the strings that you mean them to touch, so. 
those are the three main areas that can help your cord stay buzz free. And one, one little tip that can help your fingers come down and not mute the surrounding strings, stay on your fingertips, and just have a really good general angle of attack is pull your elbow close into your body instead of having it out like this. When you do that, you get a little bit better angle of attack on the strings. It's easy to come down right on your fingertips and not mute the neighboring strings. So that's your E minor chord. Now, you may take you a while to learn this chord and memorize it, and one thing that you can do is just take it off, put it back on over and over again. Leave it there for a while, make sure it's clean. If it's not, readjust it. Take it off, put it back on, work on memorizing it. Take it off, put it back on. And if you need to stop this video or pause this video, work on this chord shape to where you get it down and you can memorize it, that's totally fine. The next chord we're gonna look at is a D2 chord. And it only uses two fingers as well, so it's pretty simple. The only real difference between this chord and the last one as far as strumming is you're gonna leave the sixth and fifth strings completely out. Don't touch those at all. Let's go ahead and get this D2 chord on here. Put your first finger on the second fret of the third string, right behind the fret, right on the tip of your finger. Bring your elbow in if you need to for a better angle. Remember all those things? Your third finger is gonna go on the third fret of the B string. Same things, tips with that finger, okay? And as far as your finger muting neighboring strings, watch out for this third finger because it usually likes to hang out, hang over and just mute that high E string. So watch that, that's kind of a trouble spot. But if you remember all the tips, you should have a pretty good sound on that D chord. Leave the low E or the low sixth and fifth strings out. Just strum the top four strings. If it sounds bad, readjust it, try again. Remember all the tips we've gone over. And again, go through the same process. Take it off, put it on, leave it there for you know 20 or 30 seconds, let it soak in. Take it off, put it on. And if you can practice this multiple times a day when you're trying to learn new chords, that's awesome. That helps you remember these chords a lot faster. So just do that with me real quick. Put that D chord on, leave it there for a little while, take it off. Completely, you can shake your hand out even if you want to. Put it back on, leave it there. Try to remember what that chord feels like. Try to remember what it looks like too. And again, if you can practice this multiple times a day, it's gonna help you remember these chords better. Those are the two chords you're gonna to need to know to play the song at the end of this lesson. Now, the next step we need to go through is changing chords smoothly. And I know that this is one of the hardest things for newer guitar players to do. Once you get these chord shapes down, changing between them can be a real challenge. So I'm gonna give you some tips for making this as easy as possible for you. The first tip is probably the most important thing for you to be able to switch between chords smoothly, and that's actually get the chord shapes down perfectly to where you can go right to them before even trying to switch between them. If you try to switch between chord shapes before you really know them, you're gonna make it just that much harder. So if you don't know your your E minor and your D2 to where you can go right to them, that's fine, take some time, get those down. But once you can go right to them, it'll make switching between them just a lot easier. The second tip I have for you is to visualize the next chord before you're gonna to move to it. So if you're on an E minor, think about that D chord and what it looks like and then move to it. Kind of anticipate it, then go same thing, when you're on the D chord, think about that E minor chord, visualize it, and then move to it. And just do that over and over again. Second tip I have for you as far as switching chords is to think about what that next chord feels like. It's kind of like you did when you were learning your individual chord shapes. If you're on an E minor, think about what that D2 feels like and then visualize it. The more ways you can attack something to remember it, the more success you're gonna have with it. So visualize it and think about what that next chord feels like as well. The last tip I have for you is to always be thinking ahead. The last thing you want when you're playing through a song is to be taken by surprise by a chord change, right? So if you're playing on an E minor, be thinking about that D2 before you have to move to it so you don't get taken by surprise. You made it to step five, it's finally time to go through the song that we're gonna be learning in this lesson. It's the America song, 
a horse with no name. And I picked this song because it's pretty easy. It only has two chord changes. And it's gonna be really cool for you because even though you just learned these two chord shapes and some basic strumming, you're gonna be able to jump into a real song and play along with some real music, which is awesome. Now, a chord progression is just a specific order of chords. And this song is really simple. We only know two chords. So we're only, we're only gonna be using two chords, right? And the idea is all we have to do is learn when to switch from chord to chord. And for this song, you're gonna stay on one measure of E minor. One, two, three, four. And then you're gonna switch to a D2. And then count for one more measure. One, two, three, four. And that's the basic structure of this song. It's really easy, really simple. And I wanted to do this because I wanted to give you time to switch between chords. At first, if all you can do is play a whole note, just one strum on the ones, one, two, three, four, then switch one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. That's totally fine. That's awesome. It's you're really getting a lot of the battle done because switching between chords like that and keeping your strumming going at the same time isn't easy and it's a lot to think about. So if you want to pull up the track, the original song and play along with it, that's totally fine. Just count along. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Now, if you want to get a little bit more adventurous with your strumming, if that's easy for you, what you can do is play quarter note strumming. So on every beat, one, two, three, four. You can strum, right? You can use all down strokes or you can use a combination of down and up strokes. I'm gonna do down and up strokes just so you can get an idea of what it looks like. So it would be one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And remember the tips I gave you about your up strokes here. Don't dig too much of the pick into the strings and you don't have to hit all six strings with your upstroke. So if you need to break that down and take your time and just work and slow that way down, it's totally fine. Now for you guys out there who are a little more adventurous or this is coming easy for you, let's talk about eighth notes real quick. When you count, you can count eighth notes by counting one and two and three and four and. You're just sticking ands in between the numbers, right? So instead of something like this with quarter notes, you'd have twice as much strumming going on. And also, it's really important to stay relaxed when you're strumming this much. Remember the honey and feather analogy there. This song, the original feel of it, isn't straight eighth notes though. That's one thing that's gonna be important for you to be aware of, it's swung eighth notes. So instead of having straight eighth notes like this, it's gonna be a different feel, it's gonna be a swing feel, kinda of like this. And that'll be really apparent when you pull the track up and listen to it. So let me give you just an example of what swung eighth note strumming will sound like when you apply it to this E minor D2 progression. One, two, three, four. That's basically the entire song. Just do that the entire time. You can even pull up the track and play along with it. It's gonna be great. You're gonna be playing guitar for real. There's so much more to explore with the guitar and this is really just the tip of the iceberg, but it is a great starting point for you. If you'd like to see more lessons like this, you can go to guitarsystem.com slash beginners where you can get instant access to my new guitar lesson series. It's a great follow-up to this first lesson and it's free. So check it out and I'll see you there.